Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start recording. Hi. Hi. We have the wonderful Lorelai with us today. We're going to be learning. Hey. All right? We're going to be learning some um, great things from her and what she did um, with her team in the last few months, really, and things that we can implement with our team that I feel that after talking with Lorelai, it's a lot of, it's a lot of things that we could be implementing and a lot of it we're already doing and we already have that team culture. It's just doing just a little bit more. And so I'm excited to have y'all hear a little bit more about Lorelai and um, we can go from there. Great. Well, in case you uh, don't know me, Lorelai Demmel, new Emerald Ambassador, super excited uh, about that. Um, Cassie, last month, uh, her and I were working on some graphics for Carissa's team. And so I confided in Cassie that this was my team's push month. And I said, it is really difficult for me to focus on graphics when my focus really needs to be on my team and on point. So can you please help me out? And I basically told her that she has me. I said, you can ask me whatever you want. Just help me with these graphics. <laughs> so I, thanks to your leader helping me out, I am here for all of you and yeah <laughs> so thank you Cassie for that but I've been with Plexus for two years April uh, 2015 was my two-year anniversary and really it, me getting involved uh, if you haven't listened to the video last night I'll just kind of summarize that but I talk a little bit more about it in that video uh, it really was a God call and I really spent the first um, I'm going to say really all but the last four months, my team has been solely product focused and solely um, just talking to people about the product and how they can get a discount and maybe they want to help others get healthy. That has been our focus. However, since January, we've sort of shifted that focus and we've started uh, helping our team to become more business minded and business focused and getting business builders on our team. And a lot of that for us has looked like posting. Previously, we solely posted about product. I rarely posted about the business and we sort of shifted our team culture starting in January and encouraging uh, everyone to post about the business opportunity as well because if you're on this call uh, some of you may be in a place that you are earning an income and if you're not yet that's okay however this company has an incredible compensation plan and so I've just felt convicted that I'm earning a full-time income I have to tell people about this I have to share this with them and so that's sort of been a shift in culture for uh, our team and trying to find that healthy place of not being so forward about it but just saying I want to share this gift with you because it truly is a gift Agreed. So, yeah um, okay, so what was nice was a lot of you were on our Gold Digger um, team call, and if you weren't, you have we have this capability to chat with everybody on the side. So if I'm an, I have a lot of people muted right now, but if you raise your hand or something and you have a question for her right now, we can open that up now. I have tons of questions just in case, but. <laughs> And I did let Cassie know, I don't know how many of you watched the video yesterday, but I did not want this to necessarily be a duplication of yesterday. I wanted you all to be able to watch that video and then come to this and say, okay, I love what you said, that was great, but I wanna go a little bit deeper with you. And so ask me about this or that. So I really did not, I, I can certainly, I'm a talker, I can talk if you need me to talk. But for me, I know you all are wanting probably to know more specifics about your business and what you need and what you would recommend and what we did. And so I would love to hear uh, your, your questions and I would really love to be able to help you with that. Yes. So what questions, just right off the bat, do you have for me? Okay. Raise your hand if you have one. I'm trying to see everybody. Some people I can't see. I don't see anybody chatting over in the little chat bar either. No. Uh-oh. Did somebody? Oh, somebody's seeing them. Um... Okay, well, I'll start it out. Maybe they're just nervous and they just don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
So um, I know yesterday you talked about a lot of people asked, how in the world did you get um, your white lines to respond after so mm -hmm. long? Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it, I, I saw that you were pretty much just honest with them. So maybe just mm -hmm. dig a little deeper on how you reached out to them, kind of what they, um, what their comments were back, um, things like that. Yeah, white lines can be scary. We see those white lines start to show up month after month and we sometimes don't know what to say or we reach out to them and then we don't hear anything so we don't know sort of how to handle them or what to do so we kind of ignore them and we just kind of tuck them away and just go okay well they're obviously not interested and we just write them off. The culture on our team is just to check in with people uh, on an, in a non-plexus way. So I'm checking in and I'm finding out what is going on with Becky because she hasn't like, hey, how's life? What's happening? What, how are things going? And I just make an effort to engage with her uh, on a personal level. And so that's what we've encouraged our teams to do is just because they're a white line doesn't mean they're always going to be a white line. Uh, check their pulse, see how they're doing. Maybe they have a lot of life happening for them right now. And so right now, Plexus, they just can't think of taking their products throughout the day because they have too much going on. So we want them to know that this just isn't a business for us. This really is network marketing and it's relationship marketing. And so them purchasing from us is about us caring for them and pouring into them. And maybe some of that is just listening to them from time to time. So for us, when we went back to those white lines and started to pursue them, it wasn't that big of a deal because we were already maintaining relationships with them. And if you haven't started doing that now, start doing that. Go through your white lines. Uh, encourage your people to go through their white lines and just build relationships. Start, start a foundation of building relationship with them. Uh, that way, when you do have a push month, we were very honest. The language we used with our people was really, hey, I need 10 more people to hit a super huge goal this month. Could I count on you to be one of those 10 people? It was, it was really that simple. We didn't, there wasn't any, you know, and if there were a hesitation, well, I don't know, I get paid on Friday. That is at that point, we would offer some sort of incentive. But prior to that, we just asked people to help us. And if they were willing to help us, then they did it. Um, I didn't pay out an exorbitant amount of incentives this past month. And a lot of people have kind of asked about that. Um, I do love win-win situations. My team knows that. So in circumstances that I felt like, no, we need this, we need to sweeten the pot a little bit for this person. But we did not do anything sweeping across the board where we said, everyone gets this. We took it, every single individual and every single person. Um, and if you haven't seen those sheets that I posted yesterday on the page, I did give Cassie them as well, but they're points by day. And I'm sure she'll talk to you all about that. But that is super helpful. So if you're shooting for a gold goal, goal you'll know where you need to be on the 10th. I need to have in this many points in order for me to hit goal gold at the end of the month. Okay, well, I'm five short. All right, that's one person, not that big of a deal. I can make up, I can make up that person. And so you can kind of gauge on there. Okay, well, it's the 15th and I'm at 20 points behind and my goal is gold. Oh, I need to make sure I'm starting to reach out to somebody inactive now. So you're starting to build relationship now instead of, oh no, I reached out to them. My goal is in 48 hours and I haven't heard back to them. And there's this panic. We sort of were able to stay on top of that every step of the way. So there was never a panic moment for my team. Uh, we had a plan. We knew where we were at the entire step of the way. Does that help answer some of that with white lines and what we did and how we reached out? And I did go back and look. We had just that month, we had some the month before that we had gotten buyback in, but that particular month, uh, we had 30 white lines on my team go active. And now those weren't personal level, level ones. However, I will say that personally, I had 14 white lines go active. So out of those, a good portion of them were, were mine. Uh, I was intentional in saying I needed 10 or less 
There was a few times I said we needed 10, I needed 10 more people, and I really needed 14. Uh, however, I said 10 because 10 sounds a lot more intimate for people. And so when you can tell them 10 or less, they want to be part of that. They want to help you hit that goal. And um, so that's why I use that 10 as a, as a benchmark. And again, what kind of verbiage it really was. Hey, I, I'm looking you know, to rank up. Can I get your help? Now, prior to that, for people we had been working on the whole time, our team knew we were trying to inactivate people. So some people activated just out of us talking to them. In those cases, we, we said things like, I am so sorry that you felt like Plexus didn't work for you. It's my fault. I didn't pour into you the way I should have. I didn't support you the way I should have. And I want to offer uh, something for you, me, to go back and do this journey along with you because you did not have me at the beginning of this and it is my fault. Would you be willing to go back and do this again with me? And some people said, no, not now, not yet, and that's okay. But others said in March, well, I don't know. I struggle with this, this, and this. But it opens up the conversation, and that's the thing you want. You want to open up the conversation with them because right now they're likely ignoring you. They're likely, but when you put it all on yourself and say, I'm so sorry, this is my fault that you were not successful, immediately defenses go down. And that's our goal. We don't want our white lines to believe that we want something out of them. I mean, ultimately, what we want is for them to be healthy, right? right. We, we want their health goals. We want that. And we want Plexus to be the way for them to achieve that. So in some ways, do we want something? Yes. But ultimately, we want to care for them. And so by us just taking the blame and putting that on themselves, on ourselves, it's going to lower their defenses and they're far more apt to begin conversation with you. Does that help? Yes, I agree. Tiffany, did that help? Um, does anybody have any questions going to stemming off of that? I have a question. How do you feel about um, when you're trying to rank up in a month, adding people without welcome packs? Say that again. Like months that you're pushing or ranking up, how do you feel about adding ambassadors without welcome packs? So we did that the last two days only. Um, and Again, we did it individually depending on each team. I mean, my team is larger being an Emerald team. So we really individualized it um, based on who, who it was. But the last two days is when we recommended it. The other thing was making sure before we did it that if somebody was at adding an ambassador that they already hit their big reveal goal. We wanted to make sure that ambassador was winning and hitting their big reveal goal before, even though, yes, would it have helped me in the, in the end? Yes, I still wanted to care for that ambassador and make sure mm -hmm. that they hit that big reveal goal first before we went ahead and offered them a welcome pack. Um, and so the verbiage then afterwards that next month is to talk to them about getting a welcome pack and we're upfront about that with them. Hey, normally I would help you have you purchase a welcome pack. However, I'm shooting for a really big goal right now. So I would love it if you could purchase the triplex by itself right now. And then next month, we're going to go ahead and get your welcome pack for you. Uh, it's super easy to do. I'll, I'll write out the email for you. You just press send. I'll follow up. We'll get it taken care of. And that way you're committed for 90 days anyway. So uh, you'll be good awesome. to go. Now on that, did you send a lot of voice messages or were you calling them? What was the best thing that you saw the, the most used out of that people responded more, most to? Well, again, since we had been working all month for this, it wasn't a last minute sort of thing. I had one team, the leader is uh, pretty disengaged from her team, but she has a gold team. Uh, isn't really having at gold points right now, probably like 60 points, which is still, but she has the enough numbers and she had enough inactives that I knew I wanted to reach out to them for that team. I wrote out a voice memo for that team. And then I wrote out a list of names for her people. And I asked her to forward that voice memo to her team 
and if she could include a generic message along with that. That way I did all the legwork for her and all she needed to do was reach out to them because a message received from her, their leader, it's just going to be received a lot better than it's going to be re received from me who I don't even know most of these. Now, a few of them I've built relationship with and those particular ones I have, uh, I did reach out to them uh, personally. So uh, it depended who they were. I, I know my team well enough. I know my people well enough. Again, you can see we do things very individual for people. And so if I knew, you know what, I'm sending this person a text or I'm messaging this person or I'm sending a voice memo to this person, it was very, very individual. I like that. Yeah, and Jana, I see your message about the verbiage, but uh, yes, I also included some verbiage on the call last night. Uh, so if you guys want to, want to use any of that. Um, tell us more. Oh, go ahead. Does anybody have a question? Sorry, I was clearing my throat. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. Okay, tell us more about um, what your team does monthly. Like, if I came to your page, what would I see that you consistently do every month? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I think one of the things we've done that has helped us with this goal and just team camaraderie, we have a weekly call every Monday at 8.30. It used to be Sundays. We changed that to Mondays. Uh, and we did a poll because we were noticing that there wasn't as much engagement as we would like. And so we thought, you know, let, life changes, right? Maybe Sundays worked at one, one time for our team, but maybe they're not going to work now. So we let everybody know we were putting out a poll. We wanted to get uh, more people on the call and what day and time would work for people. And so we went ahead and asked and that seemed to be the best time for people. So we now have a weekly call and we do team trainings. I know Jana has done um, a call for us on that, on that team call. I've had Carissa do trainings. I reach out to different sidelines and ask them to do trainings. And sometimes I don't even know maybe necessarily what it's about. I may say to them, my team is focusing on this this month. I think it's valuable to have a different perspective, somebody from outside our team. Uh, and so I'm going to ask so-and-so to do it. And then I ask them and I may say, hey, this is, the, this is our goal this month. Is there anything that maybe the Lord's speaking to you or that's been heavy on your heart that you've been learning in your business that you would like to come and speak about us? So I tend to be really fluid and flexible with our team. I guess on those team calls, the biggest thing, what does my team need as a whole? So we have a month wide focus like this month, because we've had all of these big pushes is really back to the basics. We're focusing really on basic things. We're going to go over back office training. One of these weeks we're going to do, we do power hours typically once a month with our team. So we'll get on a call and that going to be a power hour. So uh, this is an opportunity for some of our up and coming leaders also to lead a power call. Uh, and they can go, okay, it's this time for the next five minutes, we're going to reach out to three new people. And so we'll just go through a power hour so people know what that looks like and have support. And we may ask, hey, does anybody want to share one of the messages they left? So And then I may share and Ashley may share uh, one time a month. And like I said, we like to have a special guest in from time to time too. So we can, we really try to have a good gauge of where our team is at and what they're needing and what